Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Mediocre Mahler, a mild-mannered survey. We're going to talk about averageness. Nothing hysterical, nothing nasty or mean, just irrelevant. Utterly, completely, totally irrelevant. Doesn't that sound terrible? We Now that we've discovered and discussed the idea of mediocrity in music, it really does sound just as bad as an outright screaming hysterical pan, doesn't it? But we don't have to scream. We don't have to be hysterical. We need to just talk about the facts of Abado's second recording of Mahler's Fourth Symphony, live or dead, with the Berlin Philharmonic and René Fleming, an absolutely dreadful, oh no, that's not mediocre enough, a completely, no, I can't say completely, that's a that's an adjective that means like, it's, it's hyperbolic, an uninteresting soloist in the finale, and we'll get to that in a moment. Let us begin with why this is so mediocre. Some of you may recall that Abado already recorded the Mahler Fourth in Vienna with, I believe, Frederica von Stade um, in the finale. Um, she was marvelous. The rest of the performance was, was mediocre. It had, when it came out, some great got some great press in certain quarters, but it, it didn't wear well. It really didn't because there just wasn't enough interesting things you know, happening, <laughs> weren't enough interesting things happening um, to sustain interest. It was a little bit sluggish and droopy. Well, see, wasn't that nicely mediocre? A little bit sluggish and droopy. I thought that was very artful. I really did. However, when he remade the Mahler Fourth, he perked up quite, quite a bit. He really did. I have no hesitation giving him props for getting through the first movement in 16 minutes and 13 seconds and the adagio in less than 20. I mean, that's that's a bit of a difference. And it's it's rather characteristic of Abato's late work because as his career progressed, he became lighter, more ethereal. He never really got into sort of like period instrument fast tempos, but he wanted lightness and clarity above all things. And Mahler is a composer for whom lightness and clarity, um, clarity always, lightness, not really, right? I mean, let's be honest. And the problem with this fourth is, is just that. You would expect, frankly, that the fourth being Mahler's most gracious, ingratiating, neoclassical, kind of friendly symphony, would benefit from the lightness and clarity approach. But the issue with this performance is that all of that is written into the music. You, you need to do what Mahler specified. It doesn't need more. It doesn't need an interpretation that takes the, the works of you know, chamber music-like interplay and, and turns it into an end in and of itself. And that is what happens here, especially in the first movement. If you listen, for example, to the development section, it, it that, that development section takes all the motives from earlier in the symphony and, and breaks them up into little bits. And what it needs is not extra clarity. I mean, the orchestration is exquisite. What it needs is flow. It needs somebody to assemble all the pieces. It needs to have its big climax is suitably effective with the trumpet blaring and the tam-tam. You don't hear that here, especially the trumpet. The trumpets are terribly weak. Berlin seems to have weak trumpets. I've noticed that recently. I, listening to the Kirill Petrenko uh, Shostakovich, uh, they, were, they were also, the trumpets just didn't sound like they were, they were particularly ballsy when they needed to be. And Mahler... Mahler writes huge orchestral climaxes in this first movement with just a single trumpet getting the tune on the top. And that can't get buried. You know, the irony with Abado's recordings of these works is that, is that when he, he tries to clarify and go for all these inner voices and little bits of detail, he often misses the big point. 
that's what happens with micromanaged performance. And I think micromanaging is a fairly mediocre term. I mean, it's not, you know, evil and it's not hysterical the other way. It's not positive or negative. It's just a fact of life. The scherzo, similarly, it's missing accent. It's missing character. I mean, some of the playing is wonderful. For example, the clarinets. I mean, they are they are really on point, um, exactly as Mahler indicates. But the solo horn, not so much. And Abato isn't doing anything, anything to help. In the adagio, well, it's nice to have a flowing tempo for the adagio. It doesn't have to be completely static. But in that passage where you have a series of abrupt tempo transitions, you know, with the variations or coming fast and furious and they have to start out slowly and then speed up and then speed up really quickly and then speed up even more abruptly. He, he doesn't build in the contrast. And that's a problem. It's a problem. It's just a problem. It's a mediocre problem. Then we have Renee Fleming, a lovely singer with a beautiful voice who cannot capture the innocence and simplicity that Mahler demands. She sounds more like Elizabeth Schwarzkopf. That is, she's she's artsy and 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 artificial, um, and that really really ruins. Or I don't want to say ruins. That's a terribly pejorative term. Oh my goodness, no! It's not. It's not ruined. It's 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 it's. Oh, this is hard. It's not ruined. It's it's it's. it's diminished. How's that? It's diminished. It should not sound artificial as it does here. Um, and so the performance itself, you have wonderful playing, beautiful, it's a Berlin Philharmonic. Abato is, has his fans. He's considered to be a great conductor. Renee Fleming is a great singer. But when you add up everything that they do, the result, my friends, is still mediocre. So keep on listening and thank you for joining me.